Chapter Nine of Book Six of Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lisa Kenning. Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo, translated by Isabel F. Hapgood. Chapter Nine. A Century Under a Gimp. Since we are engaged in giving details as to what the convent of the Petit Picpus was in former times, and since we have ventured to open a window on that discreet retreat, the reader will permit us one other little digression, utterly foreign to this book, but characteristic and useful, since it shows that the cloister even has its original figures. In the little convent there was a centenarian who came from the abbey of Fontevraud, she had even been in society before the revolution. She talked a great deal of M. D. Miramesnel, keeper of the seals under Louis XVI, and of a presidentess du Plat, with whom she had been very intimate. It was her pleasure and her vanity to drag in these names on every pretext. She told wonders of the Abbey of Fontreville, that it was like a city, and that there were streets in the monastery. She talked with a Picard accent which amused the peoples. Every year she solemnly renewed her vows, and at the moment of taking the oath, she said to the priest, Monseigneur Saint Francois gave it to Monseigneur Saint Julien, Monseigneur Saint Julien gave it to Monseigneur Saint Eusebius, Monseigneur Saint Eusebius gave it to Monseigneur Saint Procopius, etc., etc., and thus I give it to you, Father. And the schoolgirls would begin to laugh, not in their sleeves, but under their veils charming little stifled laughs which made the vocal mothers frown on another occasion the centenarian was telling stories she said that in her youth the bernardine monks were every whit as good as the mousquetaires it was a century which spoke through her but it was the eighteenth century she told about the custom of the four wines which existed before the revolution in champagne and bourgogne when a great personage a marshal of france a prince a duke and a peer traversed a town in burgundy or champagne the city fathers came out to harangue him and presented him with four silver gondolas into which they had poured four different sorts of wine on the first goblet this inscription could be read monkey wine on the second lion wine on the third sheep wine on the fourth hog wine these four legends express the four stages descended by the drunkard first intoxication which enlivens the second that which irritates the third that which dulls and the fourth that which brutalizes in a cupboard under lock and key she kept a mysterious object of which she thought a great deal the rule of fontreville did not forbid this she would not show this object to any one she shut herself up which her rule allowed her to do and hid herself every time that she desired to contemplate it if she heard a footstep in the corridor, she closed the cupboard again as hastily as it was possible with her aged hands. As soon as it was mentioned to her, she became silent. She was so fond of talking. The most curious were baffled by her silence, and the most tenacious by her obstinacy. Thus it furnished a subject of comment for all those who were unoccupied or bored in the convent. What could that treasure of the centenarian be, which was so precious and so secret? Some holy book, no doubt? some unique chaplet some authentic relic they lost themselves in conjectures when the poor old woman died they rushed to her cupboard more hastily than was fitting perhaps and opened it they found the object beneath a triple linen cloth like some consecrated paten it was a faenza platter representing little loves flitting away pursued by apothecary lads armed with enormous syringes the chase abounds in grimaces and in comical postures one of the charming little loves is already fairly spitted. He is resisting, fluttering his tiny wings, and still making an effort to fly, but the dancer is laughing with a satanical air. Moral, love conquered by the colic. This platter, which is very curious, and which had possibly the honor of furnishing Moliere with an idea, was still in existence in September, 1845. It was for sale by a bric-a-brac merchant in the boulevard Beaumarchais. This good old woman would not receive any visits from outside, because, said she, the parlor is too gloomy. End of chapter 9